Hope is a strange thing, an odd virtue. A seminarian I know recently sent me a message that ended with the words, Don't lose optimism. Being a Dominican, the innate desire to dispute that dwells within me could not help but respond, Optimism is the belief that things will keep getting better and better. It's not the same thing as the infused Christian virtue of hope. An optimist is someone who lacks information. A man of hope has encountered Christ. After many furious messages back and forth, we eventually concluded we probably mean the same thing. I had pointed out that optimism is the illusion that the human journey is simply progress in one enduringly improving direction. Hope, on the other hand, is the strength to endure and not give up in situations where everything is becoming more and more arduous. Hope is the virtue that preserves us both from a presumption that blinds us to the difficulties and dangers of life and from despair that can sometimes settle upon us, perhaps especially during these times of pandemic and lockdown, a despair that would almost have us lie down and give up. Despite the pandemic, I still go into the university where I serve as the non-ordained chaplain. Students still occasionally come up to me, and just the other day I had a very moving conversation with a young man, well, youngish, young adjacent, he's about my age. Over the course of our chat, he shared with me that he is HIV positive, and he'd been given this diagnosis some years ago. He told me that when he received the news, he was, understandably, crushed. He'd just been told he now lives under a death sentence. Yes, he can take medication every day and live an essentially normal life, and live to a fairly normal age. But the certain, sure knowledge that he was dying, was definitely dying of a known cause, was extraordinarily depressing for him. He said he didn't experience some renewed appreciation of life, some refreshing take on the value of each day. No, he just became depressed. Life did not increase in value because of his knowledge. It became worthless. He thought life now had no value for him at all, and while he wasn't going to take his own life, he wasn't going to take care of it either. But in time, through the love and care of certain people, he regained hope, the virtue that comes from God and leads us back to him the virtue that is directed towards our final destination. It is possibly only with our eyes fixed on that goal, with hope, that we are able to endure the many slings and arrows of life. The knowledge, not only that we all live under a death sentence, that this is seldom acknowledged, but that all our bodily ills, our aches, our pains, will be taken care of by our resurrection from the dead. In fact, our many trials are helpful reminders that we are subject to decay, and will one day pass away. Because this is not our true homeland. We are not meant to be here forever. And it is in fact this dawning realization, this shift in perspective, that helps us to live our Christian lives of hope, no matter what circumstances currently prevail, whether pandemic, pandemonium, or persecution. Just the other day, as I was walking home from the university, a woman stopped at the intersection, leaned out of her car and said, Excuse me, would you please pray for my dad who passed away this morning? I asked after his name and said I would of course pray for the repose of his soul. And that prayer for the dead is perhaps the ultimate expression of our hope. St. Thomas Aquinas even goes so far as to say that prayer is the interpretation of hope. If you were told that you will die tomorrow night with absolute certainty... The question then arises, how would you spend the next day? A Christian whose life is pervaded with this sense that all things are ultimately the will of God and thus tend to the good should be able to respond, I will spend the next day exactly as I would have spent it. Because each morning I wake up and pray and I try to use every opportunity given to me throughout the day to express my love for Christ and gratitude for the redemption he has gained for us, the hope that leads me on. A very wise priest once told me, if at some point your life seems to resemble a gaping sinkhole and you feel you're just marking time while the flower of your youth rots on the vine, do the washing up. And if, after that, you still don't understand anything, you don't know where you're going and you can't explain why you're in a handbasket, do the ironing. His point was, by undertaking small, practical tasks that begin and end and result in a finished product, you begin to see that order can be brought from chaos, that things that seem senseless and unfathomable now will be made clear in the bright light at the end of time. These tasks renew our sense of hope 
our sense of purpose and meaning. When I told that seminarian friend of mine that an optimist is delusional because an optimist thinks everything is going to keep getting better and better, he responded by saying, Ah, but everything is getting better and better, insofar as everything is the will of God and a means of sanctification. Touché. Quite right. All things work to the good for those who love God. Inevitably, when I think of hope, I recall those beautiful words of St. Paul. We know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character, hope, and hope does not put us to shame. For when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, I reasoned as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see as through a glass, dimly, but then we shall see face to face. The knowledge I now have is imperfect, but then I shall know, even as I am known.